Hello and welcome to Forever Most Farms. I'm Kelly, this is Steve, and our daughter Grace is behind the camera. Um, we are looking forward to, over the next few weeks, spending some time with you guys, sharing some of our lessons from the farm. We know that everybody's kind of stuck at home, and we hope that this will be a great time to connect with family and really focus on the things that are important, including um, some good life lessons that we have learned since we've been here. Um, we moved to the farm here in Rosebud, Arkansas about 18 months ago. Um, we were city people, never had a farm before, and uh, we are learning lessons every single day. So over the next few weeks, we'll be sharing tidbits. Um, we'll also be uh, giving you some information about the farm. Um, Steve's going to talk a little bit about why we're here today, so I'll hand it over to you. <laughs> well, you know, we find ourselves, a lot of us at home right now, and the kids aren't going to school, so we wanted to provide some time, even if it was just, you know, 20 minutes a day, um, where the kids could have some interactive learning. And we're going to use some things on the farm, things that we use every day, hopefully, to teach some lessons. Uh, one of the things that we're not real sure of is who our audience is going to be. Our audience may, I, we think, are going to be probably second grade age to about ninth grade age. I don't know if we're going to be able to hold attention of... Um, 10th graders like Grace and older. I hope we do. Um, and we, but we will, basically we will create the content based on who the audience is. So we're going to need a lot of feedback from all of the parents. Um, watch the videos, see what we're doing, um, see what some of the subjects are, and give us some feedback. How old are your kids? Um, what type of things would you like to see us talk about? And we will, we will literally grow this to fit who the audience is. So some of the things we're going to do in each lesson is uh, we're going to have a word for each day. So Steve will talk about that in a few minutes. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the farm every day and give you some updates from the farm. We are also going to share some information about this day in history because we want to give a little history lesson while we're here. And we're going to have a song of the day. We love music here at the farm. Um, we're here in the chicken brooder today and we actually play music for them all day long. Um, country music specifically. Except at night, we let them go to sleep. Except at night, we do let them go to sleep. So um, you can expect that. Um, the lessons are going to be about 15 to 20 minutes each day. Um, we'll also have some online reference information if you visit our website at www.forevermostfarms.com. There is a section that you'll see there um, called Lessons from the Farm, and you'll see today's agenda on there and some, a worksheet that you can follow along with with your kids. So hopefully that'll be valuable information for you. And, and we thought, kind of close it up today, and as I have sweat dripping off of my head, because it is 95 degrees in here. Yes, it is. Um, uh, do we want to... Talk about the brooder for just a second. Yeah, I think we should. We're here. Yes, so we'll talk about the brooder. Um, we have chickens and ducks in here. Um, we'll let you see some of our ducks. Today's the first day these little baby ducks are in the swim pool. Um, we're giving them uh, each a turn to get out there and get to play. You'll see here in the biggest part of the brooder, the brooder is a room. Um, sometimes it can be a little space as well where chickens live when they're in their first few weeks of life. So when chickens are babies, they have to have 95 degree constant temperature at the beginning and each week that goes down just a little bit. So we raise chickens um, that uh, we will be able to share with our friends and neighbors and sell. Um, but we've got about 500 chickens here in the room. They are two weeks old, just over two weeks two old. Two weeks old yesterday. Um, and so they're growing. Um, but it is warm in here. We also raise uh, brooder chickens, and we've got baby ducks over here. So there's lots going on in the brooder, and we wanted to make sure and share that with you um, here today. And we'll go right into our, our word of the day, because it is kind of like what we're talking about. And today's word of the day is ecosystem. So um, an ecosystem is a community of living and non-living things that interact by exchanging matter and energy. And I know that sounds like one of those lessons, vocabulary lessons you have to learn in class, but I'm going to break it down. The farm is an ecosystem, and we have things that are non-living, like dirt and brooders and buildings, and then we have things that are living, like our plants, animals, us, the chickens, the, the ducks, and they all live together to kind of work together. And the dirt has all kinds of things in it to make it rich with nutrients and and water and oxygen so it can feed the plants. Then the, the plants grow and can feed us and it can feed the animals. And then the animals will have waste byproducts just like we all do. 
and those poop waste, is good here on the farm. Yes, and that goes <laughs> into the soil. So once it's gone into the soil, it makes it better to grow more plants and which you can grow more animals and have more food. So we'll start telling you also about this day in history. Yes. So lots of fun things happened on this day in history. Yes. Um, so one of the cool things that happened on this day in history is the first newspaper went 100% online. So that happened in Seattle. And you guys know we live in a virtual world. For many of you kids out there, you probably have never seen a real newspaper. Um, but uh, this was a big day in 2009 where the first newspaper went 100% online in Seattle. Correct. And in 19, or in 1776, not 1976. Going way, way back. Yeah, in 1776, um, we all know that date because it was important in history because that was the date of our independence. Like there's a song about 1776. There's all kinds of stuff about 1776. <laughs> but this day in history, the British General um, Howe evacuated Boston. Now, Boston, of course, was like where we had the Tea Party and started the Revolutionary War. But he evacuated and took the British back to Great Britain um, after a successful siege by the revolutionary Americans. And that was led by a guy named General George Washington, who then went on to become our first president. And then also, um, this day in 1919, you want to tell them who was born? Oh, yes. So the great Nat King Cole, who was a singer um, way back, uh, has uh, was born on this day in 1919, and uh, that leads us into our song of the day, which is Unforgettable by Mr. Nat King Cole himself. <laughs> the parents probably know this song, the kids yes. probably don't. If you get a few minutes, kids, it's a great song to go listen to. It's, it is one of my favorites. <laughs> so, okay, so now we're going to talk about the, the lesson for the day, and I'm going to do this kind of a Golly, it is sweaty. I'm going to do this very simple. And so, can we talk about how this all came up? Because, you know, absolutely. Gracie is a 16-year-old, right? And she, like all 16-year-olds, loves fractions. Oh, she loves fractions. It's her right, favorite Grace? It's your favorite <laughs> thing in math. In all seriousness, it is probably one of the toughest concepts to understand. And she was like, I'm never going to use fractions. One of the tools, yeah, never use fractions. One of the tools that we use every day on the farm is a tape measure or a ruler, or a yardstick. Um, here's some examples. You know, a lot of y'all have ones that are just a foot long, and we call them a ruler, and they have different markings on it. Um, bigger ones would be considered a yardstick. So this is three feet, which make a yard. We're not going to be able to do these in the brooder very much. Um, or if you have long distances, you can measure like 200 feet with a big long tape measure. We use this to measure our fencing. Fencing. Whenever we have to go. Or my favorite. This one stays in my pocket, um, except I couldn't find it before we started working today. Um, it's just a regular old tape measure. So I'm going to show everybody a little hack, a little trick on how to learn, on how to learn their fractions. So if you look at your your ruler, um, generally you're going to see numbers, whether it's 15, 16. Kind of zoom in there for me, Grace. And there's notches in between. Those notches represent something. So if you have two numbers and there's something halfway between them, that would be a half inch. Fractions. So that would be a half inch. And then if you went half of that, so half of a half inch is this one right here. You see this little notch? That would be a quarter of an inch. So half of a half is a quarter. If you go even half of that, so half of a quarter is an eighth. So I have a tape measure, and the one I use, I want to be very, very um, accurate. So it even goes smaller. So I'm going to get this to where everybody can see it, hopefully. You guys have all heard measure once, cut, or measure twice, cut, cut, cut once. once. <laughs> yes, don't measure twice, cut once. <laughs> Though I do, yeah, that is it, measure twice, cut measure once. Measure twice, cut once. So this one goes in half to make a half an inch. It goes another half to make a quarter another half to make an eighth, another half to make a sixteenth, and the little bitty one is a half again, which is a thirty-second. So if you think about fractions, every time you get a half of it, the little number doubles. So you go from one to a half, which is one over two, to a fourth, which is one over four, to an eighth, which is one over eight, to a sixteenth, and to a thirty-second. So all you have to do is double that lower number, and, and it gets half of the previous thing. 
And we're going to use lessons later on, and I'm going to show people like how to make a wall and how to use this to actually build things. And what happens if you were to go measure and you were to um, use a sixteenth instead of a half on a wall such as this? Well, if you really do need to be a 32nd if you're going to build a wall and you want to be completely square. But if you were to use a half inch, it doesn't seem like this little bit that is half of halfway between three and four makes up a big difference. See that little part right there? It doesn't seem like that's a lot. But when you are a half inch off and your wall is a half inch off, you can have a gap in your wall that's a half inch. Or a crooked wall. Or a crooked wall. <laughs> yeah. So that kind of is what a mini lesson is going to look like. They generally won't have me sweating as much as I'm sweating today. Um, we might. We're going to be building some stuff outside sometimes. We will. Changing the oil on a car or something like that. But we do want everybody to share this with all your friends. Give us feedback. Tell us how old your kids are. Give us topics. And we're going to be mid-morning every day, five days a week. We'll take the weekends off. Um, and we hope you enjoy it. Um, so our mission here at the farm is to spread a little joy every day. So we encourage you as we wrap up today to make sure, even in this virtual world we're living in, when we can't be next to each other all the time and share some smiles with somebody, it's a great opportunity to reconnect and make sure that you're sharing um, with those that you love and, um, and taking care of each other. So we hope you have a great day. Thanks.